It's also not by chance that we go to the Ken Sporting Goods Celebrity Hotline. This guy is always coming on our show. We appreciate it. He's now the head coach of your Temecula Valley Golden Bears. And they got a big passing tournament coming up on Saturday. The great Bert Esposito. Coach, how are you doing today? Great. How are you guys doing? Oh, you know, I'm putting up with Jeff again, so it's pretty much a normal day around here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you got a big passing tournament coming up on Saturday. We're excited about it because we all have got this big appetite for high school football. We know it's around the corner. But uh, talk about your tournament on Saturday, the first annual Golden Bear Classic. Okay, well, you know, it's going to be a continuation of what I did over at my past school, and uh, hopefully we can run it as well as we can, uh, being that there's not a lot of experience here in doing it, but hopefully we'll get that rolling. And uh, we're excited because there's three elements to it. We have the kicking part in the morning, then we have the passing tournament starting at 1, and then the lineman competition at 2. That's my favorite. Jeff likes the big guys. I like watching those yeah. big those big guys run shirtless. Uh, looks like they're run, <laughs> looks like they're running with donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff likes the big guys. I like the skill guys. I like the kickers too. <laughs> no, those kickers, those guys. You know, kickers are a whole different breed, aren't they, Coach? They're all weirdos. <laughs> yes, definitely. They they are different. They have unique qualities about them. That's right. The good ones do, right? Yes. But there's some yes. really great teams that are going to be at this uh, inaugural Golden Bear Classic. I saw Redlands East Valley's on the list, Ukaipa, yep. several schools from Riverside. So, Coach, how'd you get all these great teams to come down to your place? And we're going to see some good competition. Well, you know, I, I think a lot of it, you know, reputation of the last 15 years. And, and um, you know, we, we were able to get a lot of them. I had the, the whole tournament filled by March. So, uh, and we had some teams on the waiting list as well. Now, coach, you've had you've had your boots on the ground here for a while at Temecula Valley. You know, it's, you you sat out as a head coach for a year. Um, what, how are things over at Temecula Valley? Are you having a good time? Yeah, absolutely, and we're undefeated right now, so I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coach, I was digging through your schedule. You do play Paloma Valley. That, I'm I'm assuming that was already on the schedule right before you took yes, the Temecula Valley yes. job. We, well, when I was at Paloma, we'd been playing Temecula for the last I don't know eight, nine, ten years. I don't even know. Wait, so did you um, actually schedule that game when you were still there, or was that just on the schedule? <laughs> yeah, it was just on the schedule, and you know it happened. And this year it'll be at Paloma Valley, and it'll be week five. Yeah, and you'll be on the opposite sideline. Will that be kind of weird? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. No doubt about it. I mean, I went and stood on the opposite side of, uh, sideline during spring this year just to see what it feels like. Now, Coach, now talking about this team that you have on the field coming in next year, you have a couple special players, but there's one in particular that uh, I've, we've read about and you've talked about, Brody Hughes. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, Brody, is. Uh, he'll be a junior this year, and he's a, a phenomenal all-around athlete. Uh, he went and ran track this year, never really did it before, and long jumped 20 feet, triple jumped, I think it was 39, 11 and a half. And, you know, for a sophomore uh, who's never really done it before, that kind of tells you the type of competitiveness he is and what type of athlete he is. And uh, so he's outstanding. And we also have Easton Gibbs. He's our go-to all-around guy who's got offers coming in, and he'll be a stud on both sides of the ball. Hey, Coach, you know um – Seven on seven is the closest thing we get to real football before the season begins. Um, I mean, how much how much value, how much how much stock do you put in passing league tournaments? I mean, because you see a lot of teams, they'll win a passing league title, and then they get to the regular season, and you never hear from them again. And there's a team who, um, you know, like at, at your uh, the Southwest County passing tournament, you know, they maybe they don't perform well at the seven on seven, and then lo and behold, they're winning league titles and they're making CIF title runs. I mean, so how much? In the end, how much stock do you put? Is it just about competition? Is it about your receivers and your DBs getting good work and your quarterbacks, obviously? I mean, how much stock value do you put in these passing tournaments? Well, to be honest with you, it's two completely different sports, okay? Yes, they're correlations, you know, here and there, kind of like playing uh, three-on-three basketball compared to full-court basketball. They're not the same game. It's just not even close. Um, you'll have teams that do very well. Like one year we had Santa Margarita win our tournament, and then that year they won state. And then we had teams uh, some years back when Elsinore won CIF. They didn't win one passing league the whole summer. So there really is no correlation on, wow, we did great in the summer, so that means we're going to do great in the fall. Because the real difference is those boys up front. Um, that, that's the name of the game, and they, they completely change the game. Now, is it important to us? Absolutely. You know, we work on, like you said, being competitive, 
uh, seeing how we get out there and compete, but also just timing and just seeing different routes and di- different uh, coverages and all that. You know, it plays into the mental part of the game, but it is a completely different sport. Yeah, you know, but I was following uh, Centennial football. They were at that, I don't know, the beach bash or the oh, battle yeah. at the beach yeah. or whatever, and they went like three and three. Like, not great, yeah. but you know, like you said, once you add the linemen, they've got two fantastic running backs. That's a completely different team. And I bring up Centennial because I believe you just threw against them. How did, how did you guys look against the Centennial Huskies? Well, you know, we, we did get to score a couple few. There you go. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, we moved the ball, but oh, my God. I mean, I've been playing against Logan in passing league for, I think, 18, 20 years now. I don't even know. And, and it's just deja vu, you know. It doesn't matter who's there. They they look the same. They look awesome all the time. And uh, it's it, like you said, they might have gone three and three in that passing stuff. But we all know when it comes down to it, they're going to be freaking amazing. And, Coach, finally, I wanted to ask you about the, the start of the CIF season because the whole season's been moved up. I mean, you guys will be in helmets and pads, I think, in the end of July. Is that right? Or right around there? I mean, because week zero is now August 17th. Yeah, the week zero games actually get to start at the end of July. Uh, we have a week one game, so our first day is August 6th. And it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Um, you know, I got rid of our, our, our uh, midweek, bye week, and don't play week zero just so we could play later in the year. Uh, I don't want to be playing uh, football in July. It's going to be hot out there. I mean, it's just it's just crazy yeah. because usually I'd always think like the first week or second week of August, you know, the helmets and pads come out. Usually the last yeah. Friday in August would be the first game of the season. But now we're going to be in league play, what, the end of September? Yeah, and it's funny because there's some school districts in Orange County that don't even start school till after Labor Day. <laughs> so they'll be weeks into football and school's not yeah. even in session yet. They'll be freshmen playing freshman games, and they haven't even attended one day of high school. <laughs> yeah, but, it's crazy. But the reasoning was because, the, the, like, the state championship games down the road, it was budding up with Christmas, right? Like, the season just seemed too long. They wanted to push it up a little bit. Yeah, that's that's kind of one of the reasons they give, which is kind of ironic to me because 99% of the schools are being affected by that 1% who might play a little longer. You're and correct. I'll bet you, you ask any kid on any of those teams if they'd like to play football in a championship game a week before Christmas, and they'd be all in. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we always seem to have a, a school or two from the IE playing uh, that Friday or Saturday before Christmas. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it'll be uh, Temecula Valley this year. Coach, what, <laughs> what, are, what division are <laughs> the Golden Bears? That would be fantastic. What, what division are you guys for the playoffs? Well, right now uh, I looked at it, and we're the uh, number – Number one team on their rankings in Division Eight. Hey, you know what? All you have yeah. to do is get in, right? Just get into the playoffs, and anything That's can happen. It. That's it, and we have a shot, just like everyone else. And uh, but right now, we're just worried about that first game because Temecula has lost twenty-five in a row. And so, uh, right now, I'm not even thinking about that stuff. I'm thinking about Elsinore right now. Hey, coach, you can only go up, right? That's right. Nowhere else to go. <laughs> yeah. And and we're undefeated right now. There Don't you go. Hey, never lost in that <laughs> in that gold at Temecula Valley. The inaugural <laughs> Golden Bear Classic coming up this Saturday. I'll be there. Jeff's going to be there. We're going to see some great football action. Coach, we always appreciate the time. Thanks for popping in. We'll see you on Saturday down there at Temecula Valley High School. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. See All you, right. Coach. Thanks, Coach Esposito. We appreciate it. Good dude. Do you think he roll? He has like a Harley, doesn't he, or a motorcycle? Yeah, he's a he's a crazy guy. He's like a Sons of Anarchy guy. He is? Uh, no, not really. He's like <laughs> he's like a really nice guy with a big big hog, big chopper, a, a big chopper a hog. <laughs> but I think I, I looked at I, I follow him on social media. He's a good friend of mine. But I think he has. I don't know if his t- he has a fat boy. And you know what a fat boy is? Yes. No. No. A fat Why'd boy. You tell me, Jeff. Okay. Fat boy is and, and Kono will probably tell you because he has a flat hat. He knows these things. Harley with the fat boy is a big, giant tire in the back. Am I right there? Yeah, I'm telling you, and I think he has one of those. He is a big-time motorcycle rider. Will you text him, say, ask him if he has a fat boy? No, I'm just going to see him when I see him Saturday. I'm going to go, hey, where's that fat boy? And if he <laughs> punches me, then I know he doesn't have that. He's thinking no. I'm calling him something bad. Yeah, he thinks you're making But if he yeah. slaps me hot, you know, gives me a fist bump or a hug, then I know that we're, you know I'm part of the, <laughs> the cycling. or No, I couldn't say cycling. The motorcycle <laughs> I'm, I'm part yeah. of the group. Don't don't slip him in some spandex and put him on a bicycle. No, no, no. But I that's the one thing I missed in my lifetime. I'm never going to get one either. What, fat I, boy or I, a... I want a fat boy? I want a motorcycle. But my wife is not going to allow me to have one because I have kids. 
but I do. I want a big hog. I want to drive it from here to Timbuktu. And I just want to let the bugs go on my teeth and just let the hair of uh, the wind go we're through my hair. We're doing that now in the studio. Yeah, we do have bugs. What are you yeah, talking I've about? been picking them out of my teeth. No, that's it. but Bert, great guy, great coach, and I think he's going to do a good job at uh, Temecula Valley. We're fired up about the uh, the Golden Bear Classic coming up this Saturday. We're going to be checking that out. Lots of highlights coming up on the Inland Sports YouTube channel over the weekend, so make sure you check back with us.